humans take solace in the strangest things. Many of us take comfort in the fact that there is one or many being out there, perhaps in the clouds if you were to be so basic about it, or some sort of aether, a space between worlds, a caring, guiding father figure, or figures, that watches meticulously our every move, and cares for every little act that we make, and perhaps even judges us based on the merits of what we do. And of course, on the opposite side, you have the fact that many fear the punishment that comes from these acts, which is why you have a good rep a good representative of this would be, you know, Lucifer, Morningstar, the devil. You have a very clear vision of good and evil with faith and religion, which is very important to humanity as a whole. It allows us to gauge our actions. But what if there was another force? A far more sinister and real and physical force permeating our world, influencing our actions, watching what we do, not because it cares for us and wishes to nurture us as a mother takes a child to its bosom, but instead watches us to make sure we're doing what we need to to make sure its agenda is being carried out the way it desires to for altogether alien and unfathomable purpose to the basic mortals a very Lovecraftian Clive Barker type thing and again while it is physical it may not necessarily just exist in our world it could exist between many worlds between the, the space between spaces as it were that is the god machine and in the Chronicles of Darkness, the God Machine's influence is everywhere. One may argue that the God Machine is the Chronicles of Darkness, according to the book. But regardless, every deity, every god, has its forces to ensure things are going about the way they're supposed to. Yes, humanity is there to be manipulated and make sure that the, the wheels are greased or whatnot. But far more direct agents often exist. And with the God Machine, they are referred to as angels. And these are not your typical, you know, Christian faith-based angels. These are biomechanical horrors that are sent to, per you know, to perform one mission. And when that mission is complete, they go back to the God Machine, or perhaps its base of operation, or operations... Perhaps it's even out of this world. I I'm not going to try to answer that for you. But upon completion of making sure the agenda is being followed, these angels are dismantled and repurposed and recycled. It put together with other parts from other disassembled angels. It put back together and repeat. Or they're put into stasis if they're particularly useful in their purpose. And these beings, they obey. They obey without question, because that they are pretty much machines, that's what they're designed to do. But what happens when those angels, those machines, they have a spark of self-awareness, of conscience perhaps, of just, again, just awareness of what it is, and for a moment they question why? And sometimes it's a harmless why, like, hey, I'm just curious as to why this would be something you'd want me to do. But sometimes, as with different, you know, we'll, we'll get to that, but some people purposely go, this is wrong, why? What happens? Why? They fall. They are disconnected from the god machine. They plummet. They crash back to Earth. Whether, no matter where they're coming from, that, that's where they come from. And typically, these demons what were formerly angels, they are now no longer a part of that hive mind. And the god machine demands they be dismantled, brought back, and returned for recycling, or what have you. What do you do? Like, obviously, you run. And oftentimes, these beings, these angels, had often had covers mortal existences in place for them to assume when they had to enact the agenda of the god machine. These angels, these demons, are now locked in the last cover they had, or covers, potentially, depending on that, 
and they, they, they're on the run. They go. This is Demon the Descent. It is not a game of your typical heaven, hell, god, angel type game. This is very much a game of technognostic espionage. This is a game of rebellion, of servants, of a sinister, unfathomable being breaking free and trying to find their place. Typically, that's what it's about. So, I'm here to give you a breakdown of the lore, and I'm going to keep it very basic because as I was going through this book and teaching it to myself, it's, it's a large book and there's a lot to it. So, while most of the games are going to have four beginner's guides, I can absolutely see this having up to six or more because this is the original New World of Darkness book, you know, first edition, second, and stuff like that. They were their basic course. But eventually, they made something called the God Machine Chronicle, which puts mortals in the middle of the machinations of the God Machine. They very much X Files type thing. But as time went on, they decided to make their own take on demons. And they didn't want to go the same route as, you know, Demon the Fallen. I mean, why be that on the nose? They figured it'd be fun to be a little subtle about it. So here we are. With that said, I will give a couple of basic breakdowns of what the purposes are and how these work. So the God Machine has these events that it needs to happen in order to keep its planning going forward. And they're called Occult Matrices, the result being called the Output. And these plans typically have a weakness somewhere, like everything has a weakness, and that's called a linchpin. And demons, though they are unplugged from that hive mind they have this sense of the code quote unquote of the real world <laughs> you know what think of the demons from demon the descent as agents from the matrix that is the most basic way i've found to really understand their mindset they are kind of like i think it was the matrix reloaded that had those programs that rebelled and went into hiding and all that stuff very familiar to that very familiar so many demons actively resist the plans of the god machine. Maybe they are embittered by being servants. Maybe they just really care about humanity. Who knows? One can really say that each person, once you break free, they have their own will, their own decisions, and they follow them. In fact, they have two different designations. You know how like vampires have clan and covenant, mages, path and order and whatnot. They have, excuse me, they have incarnations and agendas. Incarnations being what they were originally built for. And agendas being their own philosophies that they've kind of discovered since taking on that mortal form. Now mind you, when they have this mortal form, their cover, they are very prone to death, like anything else. They can die in those forms, they can age. Like, if they never made another pact, which is an agreement with the mortal to take over their persona, if you will. It's kind of the way they do their soul, 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 soul devil thing. We'll get to that. If they were to stay in their cover for like 90 years or whatever, they will absolutely die of old age. And even they don't know what will happen to them when they die. Like, will they, their consciousness pass to the god machine? That's doubtful because when they go to get recycled, that's wiped anyways. Will they go to heaven or hell like a normal human? They don't even know if there's a heaven or hell. Like, they aren't privy to that. A lot of them don't even know about all of the different supernatural elements. It's very intriguing. So, their incarnations are very basic, and this is what they were initially built to do. You have destroyers, which are also called swords, and their purpose is very clear. They destroy things, they break things, murder, kill, they do whatever they have to do. You have the guardians, or shields, and they were said to protect someone or something. Now, don't misconstrue that for being caring for everybody that they do that for. Typically, when the job is done, they have no issue with abandoning their charge. They don't care. The job's done, they're out. You have the messengers or trumpets. They're the ones that deliver orders or messages over to other people, other, you know, angels at the time before they fell. Whatever they have to do to pass along the message and, you know, give orders they do that. They come, their voice comes from the god machine. Then you have the psychopomps, or the wheels. 
They're the ones that actually perform the acts that make things happen. They grease the wheels, hence why they're called wheels. They gather all the materials that the god machine may need to do something, and he, they put it all into motion. Now, again, though that's what they were made for, that's hardly all they are. With their newfound independence, they form their own philosophical paths. Again, agendas. And these are the, the, the ones that I have on hand. You have Inquisitors, and they're the ones that gather all the information on the god machine that you can. They're paranoid and prone to overreaction, but they're also the ones that always have a plan. Paranoia comes with its benefits. You have Integrators, which I really, they, they drive me nuts. They're apologists. They regret the fact that they fell from the grace of the god machine. They will absolutely take any opportunity they can to be a part of that system again. Whether that involves selling out their ring, which is again kind of like their, not again, but to explain, their group of other demons in hiding. They would absolutely sell them out in order to get back in the god machine's great, you know, good graces. You have saboteurs, who work tirelessly despite the designs of the machine. They revel in their newfound freedom, and are the few that fell typically on purpose. They were like, uh, why? This is not right. And boom, they were out. And then you have tempters, who just delight in their, first off, their independence, but they get drunk on the power that they hold over normal mortals. They, uh, they play at being gods themselves among mortals. They're constantly hungry for more power and influence. They're intoxicated by the worship from little people. That's just, that's how they get down. That's what they like. So, some of the abilities that these demons have, they're called embeds and exploits. Think of them kind of like uh, cheat codes to the reality that they were integrated with. They understand how to really mess with the blueprints of existence and when they really want to put power behind it they can cause so much destruction and those are called exploits so embeds are kind of working within the system using the cheat codes and exploits are tossing in game genie uh what they'll do in order to gain more covers because they're always on the run they're always being chased down by the angels they need to get as many covers as they can and to do so they make deals called pacts with mortals and you may have small packs, which are kind of like, hey, I'll make sure your kid wins his Little League game. And, and the guy's like, what do you want for it? He's like, I don't know, but uh, I'll tell you what, you may get a little tired if I make this happen for you. And what they do is they literally take some of the life force of that mortal and inject it into their cover, which will, you know, keep it healthy, keep it protected if it was a damage, stuff like that. Because demons still have a demonic form. These techno-organic horrors, part machine, part un undescribable creature i mean you could describe it of course that's part of the point of your character but they're all creatures of either immense beauty and horror combined with biomechanical you know mechanics and mechanisms so what they can do they still have that demonic form and they can choose to focus and take aspects of that demonic form and work it into their normal cover if they need to. Like, say they can't get it through a door, maybe they could will part of their finger to become some sort of, you know, finger made of cable and tendon that can stretch out and get wire, you know, spring inside of a lock and he can feel around and unlock a door that way. But they can also do something called going loud, which is where they completely embrace that demonic form of theirs. They unleash their power, it heals all their damage. Uh, but it it doesn't just show up on the god machine's radar it sets off every freaking sensor and they will send down the angels the archangels to find you it is not a very smart thing to do unless you have absolutely no choice so you really want to maintain your covers as much as you can so say for example like according to one of the stories in there there was a guy that 15 years beforehand had made a deal with a demon that said you know if you help me get successful you know, 15 years, you can have my soul. Now, the truth of the matter is, the demon has no interest in their soul. It doesn't even know what happens to it. It just needs that soul out of the cover or out of the mortal itself. And they can literally just take over that shell. And they get the memories. They get all aspects of what was that mortal's life. And they get the relation, they get the emotional attachments. They feel just like humans do. They have emotion now. The minute they fell, they got emotion, which means many of them are racked with hopeless, hopeless guilt. 
So, with that said, not only are they on the run from the god machine, but oftentimes they're on the run from their own past, of the things they performed in the name of the machinations of the god machine. So, that's really the basics of Demon the Descent. They are not... If you, if you want true examples of demons or daemons, you can go look in World of Darkness Inferno, which is one of the original line of New World of Darkness books. It's not hard to find. And, you know, there, there may be a project or two that some of us in the pit are working on regarding demon. So, that Storyteller Vault's a pretty cool concept. That's all I'm saying. With that said, that covers the basics. Obviously, for antagonists, you have other angels. You have angels that were either through a glitch or a mistake sent off to do a mission they can never perform and they go mad in their exile. You have some creatures that may be exiled purely by choice. But again, the real enemy, the real antagonist of Demon the Descent is absolutely the god machine itself and its servants, its angels. Now, again, you could always have a fact that maybe there's another you know, an angel that exists down here that, you know, perhaps he's a, uh, perhaps he's a, as I'm just looking here, a psychopomp. And he knows that in order to get the god machine's will done as it needs to be done, he puts together a cult. Do you try to use a cover to get inside that cult? Can you do that? Will it catch you? Can it catch you? There's a lot of different angles you can go with this, but while a lot of the games, most of the games, in the Chronicles of Darkness line are based very much on just blatant horror, this is very much a an espionage game with horror elements. And there's nothing wrong with that, you just need to know where it is. Like, as I'm reading through the book, and I'm kind of learning this for the first time myself right now, where does it fit? Because a lot of these things are just way more powerful than your cut-of-the-mill supernaturals that you have in the Chronicles of Darkness. I mean, as far as Promethean goes, which, yes, I am actually working on and actually doing. I just really wanted to take a break and do Demon. Especially since Nick threw a uh, curveball at me and did an excellent beginner's guide for Hunter. I mean, how powerful are these guys? There's like 100 Prometheans at any given time that exist on the world. According to Geist the Second Edition... The only time that Sin Eaters really start to exist is when there's a huge tragedy and they are a very small population, as opposed to where in first edition they even had their own culture. So where does Demon fit in? In my opinion, from what I've read so far, Demon belongs with other demons. It doesn't seem like they're, they're too in tune with the God Machine, and that takes a lot of the danger of what the God Machine is out of a game that has other characters in it, for like a zoo game, because you can't like, the god machine exists in this reality doing its own thing. It's supposed to be really scary and whatnot. But a demon is just kind of like, oh yeah, I know what that is. It kind of gives a breakdown, and suddenly those mysterious elements are gone. So they just know a little too much to really fit in with another game. And again, it's like Promethean. Like, you really can't run a game with a Promethean, a werewolf, and a vampire. You can, but it just doesn't seem like it would be built to last. It would be a temporary agreement. So, I mean, Prometheans have their own mission demons are just permanently on the run and i mean a lot of them would love to find out if there's a heaven or a hell so they can go there but typically they're on the run whereas you know with mage werewolf vampire and even changeling there's an ongoing mission that's i don't know far less heavy i guess but also more shrouded in mystery these guys know what they're up against for the most part and they know how to exist within that but it's a silent war that they are not destined to win so Thank you for listening. That's been the Beginner's Guide to Demon the Descent. There will be other Beginner's Guides going up to follow Demon Descent. I mean, we're going to do one with the, you know, the embeds and exploits and demonic form. Because, again, they do have their own things that they could do with that. There's going to be one for character creation. I don't know if I'm going to do one for antagonists, because at some point I would like to do a Beginner's Guide to the God Machine itself. But that's something for another day. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for the... Uh, we've been getting a lot of support. Anyway, we seem to be growing pretty quick. And we just love the fact that you guys take the time out of your day to listen to us talk about the things that we love. Thank you again from myself and all the Botch Pit. You guys... I'll probably have another one up before New Year's. But regardless, 
Have a ha an amazing holiday season. And uh, stay safe. Thank you.